What's up, guys? We're just kind of waiting for the uh, stream to catch up here. Uh, sorry for the delay. Uh, just a lot of stuff going on here, trying to uh, get my uh, equipment to work. Obviously, you guys can see that my tank is still really blue. Um, I'm trying to log into the AI Prime right now, and it's not letting me uh, through the Internet. So it's going to stay blue, kind of where it is right now. Uh, today, I am going to open up the um, live stream or the chat for you guys uh, pretty quickly. Uh, probably within the next 10 minutes or so. So if you want to come in and ask questions, definitely if you want to hang out, sure. Um, and then we'll go from there. Kind of just still waiting for the live stream to catch up with the delay, and then we'll get started. All right, so uh, what are the rules of the Q&A? Um, basically, I'm going to go ahead and address all the questions that I got throughout the week through my Patreon page, and then um, we'll be talking to people here within the Hangout and then I will go ahead and put a link in the description if you want to come in and ask questions. Um, there really, there will be a couple of people who have wrenches here uh, within the chat that will take care of any spam or anything like that. Uh, what's up, Roscoe? He's one of them. And um, yeah, so that's pretty much the rules for the chat. Uh, as long as you're not a dick, we're we're pretty good and pretty laid back. So, all right. So um, Bryce, what's up, guys? Uh, Fish, what's up? And Jonathan, can you guys hear me? Yes, sir. Is my mic uh, scratchy or is it good to go? That's good. No, you good? Okay, yeah. Just let me know if it starts scratching. The internet's been a lot better lately, but it might uh, it might cut out. You never know. Um, so I did ask the question earlier on, like I do every week. What do you guys want to talk about on the stream here? And there's a whole bunch of stuff. Now, uh, Jonathan is in chat. I know that he want he had a question. Uh, Fish, you also had some stuff too. Um, so yeah, whoever wants to ask the first question, go ahead. And then I, if I have to, I'll move into the ones that are actually written down. So. Um, Jonathan, you there? You can go ahead first, man. Um, all right, Mark. So he, I'm in Boston, and no one has Cato. No one. And I ask a question if if I can start it with something else. And obviously, I guess it's a is a no. Um, well, this... What I what I did was I did the uh, uh, Cato reactor with the LEDs and everything else, and I put a mesh inside of the Cato reactor, and I started it up and let it up. I have not turn the light off since yesterday to see if I can somehow some way create some type of RG and then instead of in the tank. I'm not sure if I'm doing yeah. the right thing here or not. Uh, well, I know that um, I know that you purchased a few things for me, but I sell Chato out of my frag system all day, so uh, we can work something out regarding that uh, to get you Chato. But uh, you can use uh, Grape Calerpa is another thing that they recommend, but it seems like uh, Chato grows a lot faster than the Calerpa does in the uh, the reactor there. That's why people recommend the Chato. Um, but again, if you just contact me outside of here, I'll hook you up with Chato uh, through the mail one way or another. I'm surprised they don't have it in Boston. You, I mean, I used to live there, and um, I never figured it was an issue. I know Calerpa might be an issue because it's on the coastline, but uh, Chato shouldn't be that bad. I mean, I've, I guess I can go to uh, New Hampshire, which is an hour away from here, from where I'm at, and, and I can try to see. But the guy that is here is called Lif, uh, uh, Lovely Pets. Uh -huh. And the guy says that even the people that um, he buys them from, they don't have them. <laughs> they run us fly, out of supply. Okay. Well, that's fine. Then then just uh, hit me up out of here. It's going to cost you a lot less to go through me than it will to be, to drive an hour away for Chato. So, again, just hit me up in the messenger um, either tonight or tomorrow. And uh, what's today? Uh, Wednesday. So um, I would ship it out on Monday just because uh, the cold weather would be like two-day USPS. Mm -hmm. um, I usually put it in with coral orders. It's part of the coral section. So if people order coral, I usually throw it in with that. But um, <clears throat> and then we can work out the uh, the um, whatever that uh, coral line that you missed in the package there. We can I can send you another dose of that as well. Okay. All right. Sounds kind of good. Two birds of that. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, guys, the questions that you guys have here, I'm going to try something new. Um, I'm going to put my email address in the um, comment section here. If you have a specific question that you want answered, go ahead and send it to my email now uh, because then I will check that throughout the live stream because it's very hard to keep track of everybody's questions here on the stream. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in now. Uh, just send your question to that. Just say, hey, the title it uh, live stream uh, question. That way it will feed through all the rest of the emails that I have. All right, uh, Jonathan, anything else regarding the Chato or the reactor or anything on your mind regarding mm, all that stuff? No. Nah. Okay, cool. Uh, Fish, uh, we'll go ahead and I didn't see. I thought you said something about Marine Pier. Uh, I will check the questions, but if you have it off the top of your head. Uh, coral placement, what uh, what corals not to place near each other? Is that what you want to go into? 
Um, yeah, that and also um, I'm looking to put corals in my tank that I don't have to worry about dosing too part. Mm -hmm. uh, looking to just get the nutrients from water changes and maybe some kelp. Um, so I was wondering what you could recommend for that, something uh, that I can get that has bright colors. Um, I think I'm going to start out that because it's my first time doing corals. Uh, I don't think I want to start with any of the hard stuff yet. So I'm going to establish this tank, get used to it, learn it. Uh, maybe you know, down the line um, I could start doing some other stuff. But what would you recommend for, um, for corals? To start off with? Um, yeah. I, I know your system's just coming up here, so I would yeah. definitely say if you want to get a boost of color, zoanthids are definitely a good way to go. Uh, you can get pretty much any color underneath the sun uh, with zoanthids. Plus, they're a soft coral, so they're easy. They don't require any calcium or alkalinity um, for their growth. Uh, also, I mean, a lot of people think that even if you get some SPS in your tank, you still need a dose two part or calcwasser. Uh, it doesn't necessarily work that way. Uh, okay. Most tanks, most tanks um, can go uh, quite a while depending on the water volume. I know yours is what a 180, I think. It's 180 it? plus the sump is oh, 35, I think, or 40, 35. Right. And then you got a minus a rock. So we'll just say roughly 180. Yeah. Um, I mean, you would have to put a lot of SPS in that tank, and they would all have to be growing pretty well to actually need to dose any kind of two part or anything like that. All right. What SPSs would you recommend then? Uh, easy SPS is, uh, would be, I mean, I know that you're just starting off with coral, so SPS probably isn't the best option right now. But if you were to pick something, I would say Montipora all the way around, uh, Digitatas. So it's, it's still Montipora, but Montipora, Digitata, green, uh, red, uh, Monty caps of any type will grow. Encrusting Montipora grow very well and they're easy. Um, but if I were you, I would say go ahead and shoot for the zoanthids um, and also stick for, look for um, like hammers, torches, those kind of frog spawns, stuff like that. The stuff all, uh, it does, I mean, they, they are LPS in a way they do pull out calcium and alkalinity, but it's no, no way near um, SPS coral. Uh, for their growth so water changes would take care of a tank like that and uh okay. also also i mean i know you said you were going to add kelk um i mean there uh, there's a, quite a bit of measure that you need to take measures you need to take before you start dosing calc a lot of backups in the system i know i talked about this before in a couple videos mm -hmm. um so calc isn't always what i recommend for people who are just starting out because there's a there's a pretty um, steep learning curve even though it is uh easy in the way that you just add it to your auto top off or you can drip it in but um most people who start off usually don't take into consideration equipment failures. And, um, well, basically, if your auto top off fails with Kalkwasser, you can wipe out your entire tank. So um, I usually recommend uh, water changes to the point where your alkalinity starts to uh, dip between the water changes where it just simply can't, your water changes can't keep it up at, say, 9 dKH or whatever. And uh, then I would start using like a BRS two part because that is very easy to implement uh, via doser or by hand, depending on how much you want to dose. But, uh, Two parts a little bit, um, again, it's more work than Kalkwasser, but it's safer for those who are just starting out. Okay, perfect. Uh, anything else regarding uh, corals and stuff like that? Now with the Zoas, they should be, you should basically create like a spot for the, could they be with the hammers or is it something separate? Zoas can go next to anything. I know that I like to, because I have this little thing where it has to be organized, which is, isn't, doesn't make the tank look very natural, but uh, Zoas can go anywhere. They can go next to, ac next to Acroporas, all that kind of stuff. A lot of people like to put Zoas in between colonies because it kind of fills that gap there. Um, but uh, I, most people like to actually make a garden out of them. I know that Scott from Roscoe's Reef made a, a Zoa garden where he put all the Zoas in one spot where they grew together. Uh, those look good, but... Um, I mean, you can always frag off a Zoa piece, like a chip off a piece of rock and put it somewhere else in your tank. So they're not necessarily difficult to uh, spread around. But um, uh, there will be, there are a couple of Zoas that I would say maybe stay away from because they're pretty invasive. Um, the yellow polyp Zoa, and I sell this coral on my website. And I'm telling you not to buy it because it is, uh, unless you really like that type of Zoa, um, it, it's very, a very fast grower. If you remember the 125 on the bottom left-hand side, mm -hmm. that whole rock, was yellow polyps um, and it didn't take very long for that to happen. So um, I would say, uh, I would say stick to Zoas that are uh, not as fast growers in a way that you can manage their growth a little bit better. Okay. Now I know when they encrust over the rock, how do you actually, if you wanted to like fray those out, do they peel off the rock or you have to basically chip off the rock? How, how does it, uh, if it gets too big or I want to move them or things of that nature? 
Uh, you would have to, you can't peel them off because they would just die. Uh, you'd have to chip off a piece of rock. Now, you can cut the zoas down, the, like in between the stems and stuff like that. I mean, you can even cut the zoa head in half. Uh, that head might not survive, but another chunk will. But um, you definitely don't want to be peeling them off. Uh, they just, because I mean, how are you going to attach it? Try to attach this slimy uh, zoa to another rock. I don't think it's even possible. So uh, yeah. basically, what you would do is say you. It is. A, it's a pain. <laughs> it, oh, you try to. Ah, I don't do that crap. Um, what you want to do is go to. I did take it with that, that Arctic ice you sent me. Oh, the Arctic ice? Oh, off the frag plug? Or just Yeah, I got throwing. four heads off the bottom of the frag plug uh, twice. Oh, okay. What I would have done is I would have just razor blade the heads off and let them float in the tank and go wherever they want to go because wherever it lands is most likely going to keep growing that that the arctic ice is pretty invasive as well uh, i mean it grows really good it looks nice but it's definitely one of those that grows uh, pretty quickly um now to frag the rock i would say put all your zoas on a rock that you can remove from the tank easily if you plan on um actually uh fragging that particular zoa out say you want to get one polyp of like a um a dragon eye or something, right? So you want to have that in other places, the tank. So I'd go ahead and put it on a rock that you can isolate, let it grow, and then frag that rock and then put that pieces of rock wherever you want in the tank. That would be the easiest bet. Okay. If that makes sense. It does. Um, let's see here. Bryce, you got anything for me before I open up the uh, stream or I start going through some questions here? Yeah, just tying in the core placement. Um, so I have two torches. I have a green purple tip i mean sorry hammers a green tur purple tip hammer and a gold hammer mm -hmm. they're basically the same spot in the tank they're on the same rock same height um you know facing the same direction and all One, the purple tip opens up pretty good the gold doesn't really open up what's going on with that um it could definitely be flow i know that we talked about flow in your system a while back um now, do you that have was, power? Yeah, that was power? Monday. I talked to you. Yeah, Monday. Yeah. Do you? It was it Monday, man. It's. I guess it isn't a while back. Yeah. <laughs> Two days. Yeah. Well, my bad. Um. Yeah, that's a story. My. That's what my week feels like already. Um. Basically, flow wise. So I know that we talked about putting the power heads on the one side, letting it pulsing, and then you're going to plan on adding another one. Now, if that if that uh, colony is getting a direct hit from a power head. Um, or you just added more or an additional or additional flow to the tank, uh, the coral could simply just be adjusting to the flow. Um, corals are pretty okay. adaptive. Uh, corals are pretty adaptive in general. So I would say as long as you're not blasting the colony directly, um, then I think you would have a better chance of it opening it up. Now, has it opened up completely since you've gotten it like 100% before? No, that's what I'm saying. Since I've, op since I've gotten it, it's never really opened up 100%, but I never really had the flow for it before. Okay. So I just added that wave maker. Now I've got it where they're both getting that good pulsing flow. I have one wave maker on one side, one small constant flow power head on the other side where it's constantly creating a uh, circulation, I guess you mm -hmm. could say. It's, it's on the back. So it's constantly creating an updraft but with that cross pulse on it. Yeah, like a and spiral. And even thing. since I changed that up, yeah, even since I changed that up Monday, um, again, the purple tip has opened up um, and the gold is still kind of crunched up. But it's been like that since I've gotten them. Okay. Um, the, the purple tip has always opened up You got them both at the same time? You got them both at the same time? Same time. Yep. Now, did, were they open? We're right next to each other the in the frag system. Okay. Were yep, they, they open in that frag system? They were? Okay. Um, yeah, it could be water parameters as well. Did uh, what are what do you got going on for calcium, alkaline, and magnesium? Oh, let me put here. Uh, magnesium's high, calcium's high, alkalinity is coming and up. Do the we talked about dosing too, right? Yeah, we talked about dosing calc loss yeah. versus two yeah. part and in, in increasing the dose. And I know that I mentioned before about um, increasing your alkalinity too quickly would cause the stress within the tank. And I think that's yeah, kind of because I know you went up. From a lower elk to what uh, eight something eight five I think you said it was. Um, yeah, I went from six four to eight in one shot, and then yeah, I went from eight yeah. to eight six a couple days later. Yeah, so I think that initial jump is. I mean, I usually don't like to do more than one DK uh, jump in one day. Um, I think that would, was what called caused the initial shock to those uh, those LPS. Now, if it was SPS, that you you probably they probably wouldn't have made it through that jump, depending on the species, but. 
Um, I would say, uh, you know, once your water parameters become stable and consistent, uh, they'll open back up. I would think if they were going to die, they would have uh, bleached out and the heads would have died by now. Um, if you're getting some extension, then that means that they're, you know, they're maybe they're not necessarily happy, but they're they're not dying. So, OK, um, I guess I, the question is, is why is there, you know, there, I understand there are two different subspecies of hammers, but when they're side by side, same parameters, why is one doing better than the other? Well, I mean, one could just be been in captivity longer than the other. Um, it could be okay. various different reasons on how strong that colony is compared to the other one. Um, uh, send your questions to, yeah, yeah thanks, Scott, the, the purple that. tip is a two head hammer. Yeah. Well, right now at this branching point, and the other one is just a single head. A single, okay. Well, I'd say at this point, because you made so many changes to the tank, I would say, leave it alone. Continue to okay. keep this stability with the alkalinity. Try to cut those fluctuations down. Um, and like I said, monitor them and make sure that they're not going too high or too low, vice versa. Um, okay. And then just be consistent because coral like consistency with light, yeah. uh, flow, and uh, well, flow to a certain extent. I know SPS like different type of flow, but um, I know that some of those torches and hammers, I know that I had that colony on the bottom right in my old tank. And uh, when I added new power heads, they all sucked up for about two or three days and then eventually came back out. Um, so, uh, just stay consistent with what you have going on. Don't make any ma major changes. Don't move the power heads around. Just keep them at their normal pulsing modes that you have. And, uh, again, if they're, if they're showing a little bit of life, then they're good. If they're, if they're not completely receded and, uh, you know, dying out, then, um, I yeah, I mean, they're about halfway fine. extended. They just haven't opened up like they were yeah. at the store since I've gotten them. Yeah, you're fine, man. I wouldn't, I wouldn't stress over that as long as you're not making any other okay. uh, big changes. Yeah, for sure. All right. Um, let me check my email just in case something came in and then we'll open up the chat to anybody who wants to come in and ask questions and hang out. Um, we do have a couple here. We have, uh, okay. Maybe that's not uh, Jared. You in chat here? Cause that's, that's a long, that's a paragraph, man. I was just kind of hoping for a question. <laughs> we'll come back to this in a second here. Cause I don't want to read it while I'm uh, trying to go through all this here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and open up the chat. If you guys are good in here, if you guys don't mind. Um, I was going to get some people in here if they want to come hang out, ask some questions, and then we'll, we can bullshit for a little while. Is that good? Yeah? No? Yeah? No? All right. So here is the link. Yeah, so the link is now in there. If you want to come hang out for a little bit, um, talk about your tanks, what you got going on, uh, feel free to join. Uh, if you want to be a troll, I'm just going to boot you and block you from the channel. So FYI on that. Uh, Jared, uh, you are in chat, right? I'm looking for your name. I got that email at 920. So I'm assuming this is a question you want answered. Uh, there he is. Okay, Jared. Sorry, there is that delay, man. So you guys just got to be uh, keeping up with that. <clears throat> All right. So have I ever had brown slime disease on a coral? Uh, yes, I have. I actually, um, before I get to the rest of the question here, um, the torch that I had in my 125 for a long time, I was actually in one of my original tanks that I had, um, it died a brown uh, slime, or we call them uh, jelly, brown jelly, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, when I transitioned over to the frag tank, it, it died out, and it also took about uh, six other heads from other colonies with it. Um, basically, what I did is I dipped everything um, as soon as I started seeing it happen, and then uh, thank God I saved the rest of those frags. Um, here we go. The rest. I bought a frag uh, with two different hammers uh, on it, and the purple tip and the green tip. Okay, the gr the green tip uh, was doing well until I closed up. I'm trying to save it. Okay, uh, brown slime. Yep, yep, yep. Um, well, I don't think there's a difference between the two, um, the purple and the green. I don't think there's a difference between the two corals, other than the fact that they're. Um, you know, one's green tip, one's purple tip. So if one of them's dying and the other one's alive, um, it's just basically that jelly is like a bacteria. Um, when they're in the same system, it just depends on if the bacteria gets to that other uh, coral. Now I see you added a picture here. Yeah, I understand. I see here how the other one is dying. Okay. Now I know. Now I see what you're saying. With both of them are on the same uh, frag plug. Okay. Now what I would do if I were you, man, if you if you can, I would remove that one that's dead right now. If you have coral dip like Coral RX or something like that, I would go ahead and dip that purple uh, head or hammer that you have there and um, try to make sure, you know, try to dip it and save it. It doesn't look like it has any issues right now, but because they're literally on the same frag plug and they're different frags, um, I wouldn't take any chances. I'd go ahead and dip that coral to make sure it does not uh, die. 
let's see here uh hopefully that answers your question man um i know that you're talking about something else here in chat so okay here are some more questions <clears throat> i just set up my ai prime hd i'm having trouble the light is on top uh on top is flashing green and i can't seem to figure out how to uh, get it up uh, get it set up correctly what are the troubleshooting methods i can use to get this problem solved the instructions don't seem to help at all uh, and this is from Barry. Barry, did you um, get it connected to the online um, link right now? Did you uh, basically um, log in, make an, make an account, and then uh, connect your your light to that via the uh, serial number? I'll wait for your response here. Um, basically, once it's on there, once it's connected to your wireless and onto the um, to the internet there where you can adjust it, you shouldn't have any issues with setting up the programming. Um, now, if you didn't actually connect the light in the first place to your wireless, um, now I know in the directions there, it says to download the app on your phone or your tablet. Uh, so basically you're gonna download the um, AI Prime app. Then you're going to connect directly to your um, AI Prime light through the wireless on your phone or your Android or your tablet. Now, once you get connected to your AI Prime, uh, directly i mean you're bypassing your wireless at your house at this point so once you're connected directly to that you go into the um, light itself and then put in your wireless settings for your home so you have to connect directly to the light via phone or or uh, tablet go in there and set that up and program it to connect automatically to your wireless at your house once you're done with that you can move over to the aiprime.com or i don't know what the heck you want to call it it's basically the website um, aquailumination.com. You can log in there and then connect your profile account to your serial number on your um, your light. Then you'll be able to do all your programming from there. So I haven't seen your any answers to any of that in the uh, chat below. Um, so Barry, uh, if you could answer any of that that I talked about or confirm or deny anything that I've done or talked about so far in the chat, I'll keep an eye on that and we'll come back to it. Um, Chuck, you sent me an email. Oh, no, nothing in it. Not even a dick pic, dude. What the hell, Chuck? Nothing. It's just an email with no words, no subject. So, Chuck, send me an email again with whatever you got going on, dude. Um, okay, so let's move over here to the uh, uh, live stream questions that we have on the Patreon. Now, guys, if you're not familiar with the Patreon, just run it down real quickly because there's some people here that haven't been here before. Uh, basically, uh, Patreon is 2 bucks a month to get here on the stream. Uh, gives you access to a whole bunch of stuff that I have going on that you guys don't see on YouTube. You can ask your questions directly to me. There's a 24-hour turnaround time as long as it's not a holiday or a very busy weekend. And, um, you know, it's more of a one-on-one -on -one connection. I did, for the longest time, try to get through Facebook, try to get through emails. Uh, but with the volume coming in, I just wasn't able to get to everybody. So I went ahead and started the Patreon, started this stuff, so you guys have more of a direct link to me other than the uh, social media there. All right, so uh, some of the things here. Um, topic wise for this live stream that I asked you guys for what you wanted to talk about. Uh, Austin wants to talk about Marine Pier. Um, he didn't say specifically what about Marine Pier. So um, Marine Pier in general, if you guys are not familiar with this, is basically, um, it's, uh, I wouldn't say it's not a rock, but it, it acts like a rock. It kind of acts like a Pukani. It gives surface area for everything, uh, for your bacteria to grow and populate. Uh, if you guys remember the 125, I had what, three or four of those uh, eight by eight by four inch Marine Pier blocks in that sump. And uh, I talked to Billy, you know, a few days ago, and I he bought a Marine Pier block for me a while ago, and his tank is is performing great. It's better than anything he's ever had, um, and I think it has to do with that uh, mature Marine Pier block that's helping process those nutrients uh, pretty quickly. Um, on the 300, I have uh, Marine Marine Pier uh, spears in there, a gallon of them. I will be adding another gallon in the refugium, as well as one eight by eight by four inch Marine Pier block. And I do that simply just to add uh, beneficial bacteria or room for beneficial bacteria to grow. And um, I really love this stuff. I know that people were talking about aluminum and all that crap getting in the water. I have never, ever heard of that. I'm, I mean, I've heard of it, but I've never seen it. Uh, nobody I know personally has ever had an issue. And I've been using Marine Pier for uh, several years now. And uh, I've had zero issues. And you guys saw the 125. And uh, I mean, it was successful. And I was running Marine Pier the whole time. So I'm not really sure about the aluminum thing. Um, yeah, there you go, Billy, here. Um, Scott, how about R Roscoe Reef's 2000 subscriber contest? Yes, Roscoe Reef is having a 2000 subscriber contest. Congratulations uh, on your 2000 subs. It only took you like eight years, but that's cool, man. We all, we all got to start somewhere. Um, 
he's gonna he's gonna call me i can hear it now he's gonna be bitching about my phone <laughs> that. <laughs> i can hear it now he's so mad and there's a delay so i'm just waiting to hear him talk shit in the comment section right now um so uh yes congratulations roscoe's reef on your 2000 subs um don't do the 4,000 sub contest because, you know, that'll be about a year or two, three years out. And we don't want to be waiting for any kind of shit with that. Um, let's see here. Doug. We'll Doug. Go ahead. Go ahead, Fish. I said we'll be at his funeral for the 4,000. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah I know a couple I know a couple people are reaching for reaching for their uh, their subscribers. And that reminds me, guys, I haven't done a subscriber contest. And I know you. I still get questions on when am I going to do one. I think I did my last one at 8K. Um, let's see. What am I at now? 12? um at 13 i'll do something um i don't know what it's going to be probably something probably do coral because that seems the only thing i can really get away with um and speak go ahead no i said i sent the video in i sent one in already oh okay oh for uh for roscoe's yeah 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 see it's i don't on, it's on my channel oh no i saw that yeah i saw that uh yeah i watched your stuff the other day i subscribed to you so i saw your stuff um yeah, yeah i wanted to ask you fish why what made you want to get part of the youtube Community. What made you want to get in here and start making videos? It was actually uh, I've always I had saltwater tanks in the past, and then you know I, would, I work from home and I'm always on YouTube, and then I came across your channel, and and it was you and a few other people. I was like, man, I gotta get back into this, you know. And uh, that's the reason why I started getting back into it. Uh, I just moved into a new house. I figured, hey, let me start a channel about my build. Um, I, I guess you basically inspired me uh, and a couple other people as well. Um, to get back into this and I really appreciate that. I, I know I'm spending a ton of money, but I'm having so much fun doing it. Yeah. I mean, I, I do enjoy YouTube. Um, I mean, I won't bullshit you guys. I mean, it is, it sucks sometimes. <laughs> it really does. It's, uh, you know, the, the constant, it's kind of like, uh, you never get a break from, oh, I think that's him lighting up my phone right now. Oh shit. Let me check. There's my phone. Um, you never get a break. And I don't, and it's nothing against you guys or anything like that, but it, it seems like everybody wants to take, take, take from you, but you never get anything in return, if that makes sense. Um, and it's very, um, yeah, he's lighting on, my, lighting on my phone. Let's see what Scott had to say via text message. Uh huh. But basically, oh, he called me a bitch. That's not very nice, Scott. <laughs> That's not very nice. He called you out. Uh, shit. Yeah, shit ton of trolls tonight. Yeah, just guys, just get rid of them, man. They are what they are. Fucking retards. Um, anyways, uh, yeah, so basically, I mean, YouTube is great in the fact that, I mean, I can, you know, the money that comes in from YouTube and the connections and, of course, the sponsorships are all awesome. I mean, I wouldn't even have the tank that I have now if it wasn't for YouTube. But um, it, there is a certain aspect of it that's just kind of a pain in the ass sometimes. Um you know, making videos are is, is still fun. I mean, I still stuck on the 300 gallon build series and the 30 gallon stuff. So I still have a lot of stuff I got to put out for that. But I really want to go back to what I was doing before that were simple how to videos, uh, beginner stuff. I really enjoy those. But because I didn't have a, a display tank for the longest time, I didn't have anything for you guys to look at. So it made it very difficult to want to sit down and talk to you for 10 or 15, 20 minutes without you having something decent to look at. Um, there's only so many underwater coral pictures that people can actually look at that, that you know, find it entertaining. So um, I'm hoping once the 300 gallons done, we can go back to all of that stuff again. And um, and I could start enjoying making content again because it's kind of been la lacking for the last uh, uh, seven or eight months. It's been pretty shitty, honestly. So that's kind of the uh, the downside of uh, YouTube. But, um, you know, it's it's going. So it's moving along. <laughs> Yeah, I'm doing it for the fun of it. You know, I'm not I'm not into it for the money right now. Um, well, that's good because that's where it starts. If anybody ever starts a YouTube channel wanting to make money, uh, they're insane because um, it's not worth it. Even at this point with the amount that I do get in now, it's still, I mean, how long it takes to make a video doesn't even, you make three videos a week, it still doesn't even justify, um, you know, what the, what the, what the payment is. Um, Darren here. Well, I wanted to be part of the reefer community. I wanted to start going to reefer palooza, you know, meet everybody in the boots and, you know, doing all that type of stuff. You know, I'm, I'm a social person. I want to get out there and just meet everybody. This community is not big. It's, you know, it's, it's a small community. As you see, you know, there's, and, and this is not a lot of subscribers. Like some people have two, 300,000 subscribers, you know, it's a small community. Everybody knows each other. It seems like everyone gets along, you know, it's just nice to be a part of that. Yeah, no, yeah, no. Every ninety nine percent of us get along. I will say that. Travis, you're a dickhead. Yeah, I got that again. Thanks for whoever said that again. Um, 
yeah, I mean, everybody pretty much gets along for the most part. There's a couple of people out there that take advantage of our community and try to cheat other people. And, um, you know, karma's a bitch. So I'll just kind of leave it at that. All I got to say is uh, for you to be successful in here, just make content that you enjoy making. Uh, don't try to be something that you're not and um, and just have fun. Because if it if you try to try to go any other route, you're not going to enjoy yourself. And then, um, you know, you'll eventually stop. I mean, the reality is uh, 80 or I forgot what the statistic was that I read, but at least 80 percent of people um, stop YouTube in the first year. So if you can make it past the first year, you're good. But just understand that uh, don't expect, you know, 50 subs a day um, unless you're paying for them. And there's certain people on this community that do pay for them <coughs> for less. Um, and then, uh, you know, it is what it is at that point. Kind of uh, get what you deserve. But uh, yeah, I'm not going to go off on that tangent. Not going to do that today. I have my own uh, issues with some of the people here. But um, anyways, uh, I think Jonathan, I think your mic is queued. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, I got a question. The yeah. Marine, the Marine. Um... Oh, my God, I forgot the word. Right here? Right here? No, the actual, the, uh, the pure, the, the rock. Yeah, the the marine pier is that what you're talking about? The marine about? pier. What do you yeah. what do you place it? Can you place it under the the um, this the skimmer or because my son, the way my son be set up, I, I I can't do much. It goes, it comes down to um, it. Um, I remember the RS one hundred something. So it comes into this um, first um, hose right, and then it goes into the sock, and then. On the bottom, it has some openings, and it goes into this big chamber that where I where I have my heaters and my skimmer. Then it goes to the uh, a little hub up. It goes to some um, uh, shimmer rocks, and then I got a lot of um, other things in there. And then it goes down to the last chamber, which is the return pump. So mm -hmm. can you put the marine pure underneath the skimmer? Yeah, you can. If you get the block, depending on what one you get, you can put it pretty much anywhere in the sump. Um, some people like to have it in a low flow area. They feel that it does more uh, nitrifying uh, bacteria where it bubbles off the uh, mm. nitrates into nitrogen gas. But I like to put mine through the flow. I've done that the whole time, um, and it seems to be successful. Now, if you, were, if you have that tight of a spot, I would say stay away from the blocks and go with uh, the spheres. Those seem to be a little bit easier for smaller, tighter situations oh, there. Oh, I see. Um, and it's the same price. Um, just I would get maybe a gallon or I think they have a half a gallon or whatever, the spheres. See what you can fit in your sump without becoming an issue. I wouldn't put so much in there that you're having a hard time uh, taking the skimmer out and cleaning it and all sorts of stuff. I mean, if you're only doing it six months, it's not every six months, it's not a big deal. But if you're doing something in there constantly and you find that the marine pier is in the way, uh, it might Come annoying over time so just what about where the, where the sock where the sock is is is, is like a i don't know that the the, the, uh, the the diameter but it's like a uh six inches wide mm -hmm. and there's a lot of space in that sock a lot of space in so the sock sure itself I, in the not sock, in the sock in itself, in where, space where the I sock could, goes yes where the, where the sock goes now is the the flow obviously goes through the sock and then goes into that chamber then goes into the sump correct so it goes the flow goes into this one chamber that is behind the other chamber that goes to the sock. So the, the water comes in and because there's a pipe that goes all, almost all the way down to that chamber, then it goes mm -hmm. up through and then in the sock to this other oh, chamber. Okay. Oh, I see. So basically what I have the same thing where it flows down and that flows up over into the socks. Correct. So it goes into uh, this other chamber where the sock is at and then there's a lot of space where the sock is. Yeah, I mean the only I mean that would be fine. The only thing I would be concerned about is um, over time, the marine pier got, kind of getting clogged up with detritus and all the stuff that you would really be filtering out uh, through that process, uh, basically, because it has to go through the filter socks. So if you can put it after the filter socks or maybe uh, put it in the same section as the filter socks, just below them. So the water flows down through the socks, down through the marine pier and then into your system. Uh, I just oh. I, mean, I mean, you can go ahead and put it. Go ahead and put it uh, before the filter socks if you want. I don't think that would be an issue. Um, I, know I, I can I, I can put my hand in there. It's too um, uh, very little space there. Okay. I mean, yeah. I mean, if you marine pier is going to be fine, pretty much wherever you, you want to put it. Um, personally, I like to put it after the filter socks, just so you don't get you know fish crap and food and all that stuff stuck into it and rots and all that. Um, mm. And better, better just to put clean water flow through it. It's more of my uh, preference. So, gotcha. Hey, Travis, if I can add in, Jonathan, 
uh, the plates, I know on mine, because I have an ESOP sump, uh, they fit in between the baffles. You can actually put a plate in between the two baffles because they're like an inch and a quarter wide, inch and a half wide, and the plates are only an inch wide. That's where I have one of mine set is in between the baffles for the bubble traps. Yes, I only have one baffle, the, the baffle which is the, from the skimmer, and then it goes to the baffle, and then it goes to the uh, return pump. On that baffle, I have uh, some uh, shimmer rocks and um, some plastic scrubbers in there. Try to get okay, rid well of all that's, the... Okay, that's well, that's an idea of uh, where I put it in mind would be right there. Or you right could there? Okay. After that baffle, before your return pump, too, would give you good flow over it. Got it. Thanks. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to go through the, I'm going to scroll up the chat here, guys. If you have any more questions, put them in there. I'm going to go through. I did miss some of them. Uh, Chuck, if you're still in here, I will get back to you via email uh, after the chat um, and go through that whole situation with you. I know that's probably not something I want to talk about here. Um, <clears throat> all right. Please are uh, really interested in some coral. Okay. Uh, sorry about that. Um, all right. So, Tina, I will check out your PM unless uh, you can mention here in the chat, unless you want me to go through your situation here on live. Um, I can take care of that after the chat. Um, but, uh, yeah, just let me know what you want to do, if you want me to talk about it here or not. Uh, let's see. Uh, Fish of Hex. Do I need refugium mud and try and grow different macroalgae, or can I run Chato on a bare bottom? Um, I run Chato on a bare bottom all the time. I'm doing it right now for the exception of some marine spheres in there. Uh, you don't need to have sand or mud to grow Chato. Um, sometimes if you want your Chato to spin around, like to kind of do the um, barrel roll, I know that Murphy's Reefing has one where he has a power head that just spins it in his refugium. Um, if you have sand and mud in there, it's almost impossible to get it to have it get it to have that spin. So, uh, no, you definitely don't need to have mud to uh, make that happen, Barry. Let's see here. Let me scroll down. Um, oh, yeah, if you guys want to know why the stream was um, cut short last week, uh, they were doing some work around uh, around the town with uh, power outages. They said there might be some stuff going on. I actually lost power mid-sentence last week. Um, I'm glad you guys could carry on without me. Uh, so that was why, uh, for those of you who are still asking, why I was uh, gone yesterday, uh, last week. Let's see here. Let's see what else we got going on before I move over to the questions. Uh, somebody wants to ask, what tangs do I want in my 300-gallon? Uh, um, I know I talked about this a little bit before with um, with a couple of videos when we were talking about the 300-gallon, but I don't really have a particular tang that I want. I just want a lot of tangs. Um, I've been pretty successful with them uh, over the years. Uh, it seems like more the merrier. Now, I, I definitely, right now, I have a sailfin in there, my yellow eye coal tank, and my melanorus wrasse, as well as Reggie, the snowflake eel, and... Um, they're all doing great. I didn't realize how big the tank was until you put your fish in there that looked big in another tank, and they almost looked like they, they, they're they not even there. So uh, this tank can definitely hold a lot of fish. I do plan on um, adding at least 20 more tanks to this uh, without a doubt. I mean, 20 would be uh, on the low end. And then, of course, when they get too big, if for whatever reason they start outgrowing the tank, then they'll be moved to another system, another home or aquarium or whatever, and then um, you know we'll get smaller fish. I like to keep my fish under... Um, a foot long i think when tanks get about a foot they tend to uh just be too big for any any tank that we have here exception for the exception of maybe like a, a seven or eight hundred gallon tank i think a 300 even with a, a one foot hippo tank would still be too small uh, for her to be actually happy um yeah you guys have been asking me about quarantine now guys there is a whole quarantine playlist um if you have specific questions about quarantine uh, definitely ask me um here in the chat but if you want me to go through everything I know about quarantine, that's just not going to be able to happen here. Um, are you are you going to bubble skim the 300, Billy? Yes, that is in the plan. That is the plan to do that. I just have to figure out with my current plumbing how I'm going to go about actually doing it. I know before I had uh, the um, Airstone connected to the front of the JVO pump. Now, I could probably do that with this system. But the only issue is, I, of course, have the refugium attached to that manifold and... Um, the GFO and carbon reactor. Again, that's just like the 125, but I found when I was bubble skimming that way, there was a lot of unnecessary bubbles going through the reactors and stuff. Um, I'm not really sure how that affects long-term, but um, I do plan on bubble skimming. I was very successful with that before, and that probably won't be something I start doing until the entire tank is full of Acropora and uh, actually requires those bubbles and stuff to help clean the uh, mucous membrane. But uh, yeah, I definitely will. Um, What's your opinion on gyrotype flows versus um, 
repulsive foes. Okay. Um, gyres, I've never had one. And the reason why I never bought one is because I've heard so many bad things about them. Um, I do like the fact that they move a lot of water in, in that direction, basically pull, pushing and pulling at the whole, at the same time really allows you to move a lot of water. I've seen some very successful tanks, but I've also talked to those owners who told me that, um, basically, uh, the gyre works and then it doesn't work. And then you got to spend a lot of money to make it work again for only a short period of time. And uh, once I was told that by not only, uh, you know, one person, but two, three people, I, uh, I, you know, I just stopped period. It was, uh, it wasn't worth even trying to invest my money in it because they're uh, relatively expensive. Now, as with everything, when the gyres come out, they were having issues. Okay. They got better over time. I'm one of those people who doesn't buy something usually like that when it first comes on the market, because they have to get through the period of, um, you know, uh, actually fixing the issues before they're worth buying in my opinion so um, now compared to pulsing flow um, you guys have seen uh, the uh, 125 i had the j bows on each end plus on the back wall that were pulsing back and forth it does add a good amount of flow but uh, if you remember i also had uh, them all hooked up to the apex so i had that uh, surge modes they kicked in every few hours they're based basically on a random timer I have that on the 300 wells as well. So basically, say every 90 minutes, a surge mode will kick in or a surge wave. And at that point, uh, one set of pumps will turn on 100%, blowing, you know, maybe for 30 seconds to a minute, just full on 100%, they'll turn off. The other side will go 100%. Or maybe one side will go the other side, so they do a spiral spiral uh, kind of flow. Um, those are all things that you can do via the apex when you have those types of pumps. And I feel that you get more out of those uh, because you can do all that fine tuning to adjust the flow and to do all those certain timers and stuff that you can't just do with a gyre, um, you know, straight out of the box. So hopefully that answers your question. Hey, Travis, I got a couple of questions. Sure. What type of flow do the Zoe's and the hammers and torches like? Uh, they like the pulsing flow. Uh, they definitely don't like being blasted um, because, you know, because they, they like the various flow to kind of uh, sway in the wind or sway in the flow, yeah. or, you know. Um, but you'll definitely tell. It's one good thing about Zoas and um, the uh, hammers. If you have flow that they don't like, you'll know immediately. They just won't come out. Um, but granted, when you first put them in the tank, they might not come out anyways just because they're adjusting depending on your water parameters and what they came out of. But uh, generally speaking, um, they like a you know, varied flow, not, not direct flow, um, and then they do pretty well on that. Okay. I have another question. So sure. everyone's moving to these uh, Chado reactors. Mm -hmm. so I did a video on my channel. Um, I bought the, the largest um, bio pellet reactor they have from Marine Depot. Holds almost three gallon, almost um, three quarters of a gallon of water. It's twenty two inches high. Now, with that, if I put Chato in there and I grow Chato, my tank's one hundred and eighty gallons. Will it? I'm just thinking maybe it's not enough. Well, that would depend on your bio load. I know that uh, Chato reactors are really focused light on the Chato, kind of forcing it to grow very quickly. Mm -hmm. um, so I think uh, you would have to basically monitor your nutrient levels. Um, if the Chato's growing in there, it's a good thing. Uh, if it stops, it means there might not be enough nutrients, kind of like where I'm at right now on my 30 gallon. But um, uh, you won't really know if, if it's good enough until you you know you monitor your phosphates and nitrates and kind of see what the Chato's taking care of, vice versa, you know, versus versus what you're actually feeding and adding to the tank. Um, so I wouldn't count it out directly uh, because you're still going to grow a lot of Chato very quickly in the Chato reactor. Um, so I would I would try it at least go from there. I'm just thinking that, you know, the, the volume of water that's in my tank versus the little bit of Chato growing in that reactor. I'm just, you know, I see some of these people have sumps in there. They got these big balls of uh, Chato growing in there and they chop it out, you know, when it grows. Mm. I'm just wondering if, if it's enough or not. Well, again, I, I can't tell you if it's going to be enough until you, you know, you're monitoring your nitrates and phosphates next to the growth. I mean, if you're, if you're growing Chato on that, pulling it out every week or two and uh, your nutrients are low, um, you're fine. Okay. If you are pulling out, pulling out Chato every week and your nutrients are still high, then it might not be enough. Or maybe yeah. you need to implement another method uh, via water changes or trite method or some other way of helping to uh, remove nutrients. You know, uh, phosphate remover, you know, stuff like that. So uh, it's worth a try and uh, just monitor your stuff and see what's going on. If you have algae in the tank, um, that will outcompete. It could possibly outcompete the Chato Reactor depending on your light intensity. Mm -hmm. um, but 
again, if you're growing Chato, uh, you're, I mean, if you're growing Chato in there and you're pulling out the nutrients and you're not measuring anything that's, you know, that's bad or triggering any other issues within the tank, it's safe to say that it's working. So, okay. um, it's because it, every system's different. I can't tell you that it's going to work or it's not going to work because, you know, I mean, I have that uh, BR BR one ten biopel reactor on the thirty gallon, and that thing's growing like it was growing like crazy, and then it just stopped. And I kind of figured out it's because I'm not feeding the fish as much, and then I'm finally fully over the trite method in my, and I just simply don't feed enough on the tank, and that's kind of my own issue that I got to take care of. But um, it just, I mean, that little reactor that I have is taking care of the tank without any issues. I mean, I have a little bit of um, brown algae on the back. Uh, of the tank, but it's nothing. It's just like diatom algae. It's nothing that's going to cause any issues. There's nothing on the rock. So I know that the reactor is doing what it's supposed to do, but you know, for whatever reason, um, I, ha I had hair algae in the tank and the chater reactor uh, was still growing and growing and growing. And I was pulling it out every week and I still had issues. Well, then you need to address other things. So I, hopefully that answers your question. I know I go off on these damn tangents. No, absolutely. I got one other question. Um, I know you like to go bare bottom on your tanks. Um, and I know you put about a, a video out between uh, bare bottoms and sand. Um, the reason you like to go bare bottom is to keep the detritus um, from getting stuck in it or it's easy to clean. Like, what's the reason why you go bare bottom? Flow. That's it. <clears throat> Pure flow. Um, I know it's easier to clean, of course. You know, mm -hmm. siphoning out detritus is definitely easier. Um, I really like the purple look. I like when the bottom glass is completely covered in coralline because um, it acts as sand, even though it's not. Mm -hmm. Uh, I like the way the bare bottom looks on that. Plus, I could put as much flow in the tank as I want without any issues. As long as the rock is secure, which it is, um, I mean, I could blast the tank forever. Um, and Acropora really like that hard that hard flow sometimes. So um, if I can give the coral what they want, plus make the tank easier to clean, and I like the way it looks, uh, it works well for me. Um, it's just kind of a personal preference at that point. I mean, I you could still do well in sanded. It just really comes down to what your goals are and what you want to do. So. Now, you recommend a deep sand bed or just average? No, deep sand beds are done, man. People aren't doing are yeah. not doing that stuff anymore. Um, mm -hmm. Do a shallow one, one and a half inch, two inches. Uh, okay. Clean it, clean it um, when you do your water changes. Um, you know, siphon out the detritus and stuff like that. Uh, but I wouldn't. Deep sand beds are done, man. Uh, if you want to get that kind of uh, nutrient control, use marine pier blocks. They okay. kind of somewhat act as a as a uh, deep sand bed in the fact that they do harbor that uh, nitrifying bacteria within the rock, which allows it to take down that nitrates into CO2, uh, nitrogen gas and bubble out. So uh, that was the whole point of a deep sand bed back in the day was to uh, grow that beneficial bacteria and have those dark uh, black patches within the sand bed that you can see on the glass, which will process that nutrients. But people just aren't doing it anymore. There's much better filtration these days, much better uh, cleaner methods. And plus, nobody wants to look at black gums of shit on the side of the tank from the deep sand bed. So Yeah, okay. <clears throat> Yeah. Hey Travis, once you start the uh, Chato reactor, do you still need the um, GFO reactor? Uh, I run I run GFO uh, uh, with the Chato reactor. I know that G uh, Chato is known to pull out more uh, nitrates than um, than uh, phosphates. That's just basically I, I forgot what the percentage was. I think it was like sixteen to one or something like that. Mm. It's been a long time since <clears> I looked <throat> at it, but I found that I'm I could still pull out a lot of nutrients from nitrate wise. Um, with uh, the Chato reactor and then take care of the phosphates uh, with uh, the uh, phosphate, like the GFO or the phosphate or whatever. So, yeah. Uh, let's see here, guys. Man, it's already it's only got six minutes left. Holy crap, that went by very quickly. Um, let me scroll up and see if there's any questions just in case I missed. Uh, what lights uh, What lights am I going with over my frag tank, uh, Bill uh, Ray asked. Uh, well, Bill, um, I'm staying with the 6T5 bulbs over the left tank, and I'm staying with the three SB Reef lights over the right tank. Now, uh, I will do a video on this, but I did take care of the SB Reef light. Uh, it was the uh, the board in general. The PCB board just shorted out. Now, of course, I got like two years out of it, so it's dead. It's not under warranty or anything. Um, and this is a, that's the third one that is, has died on me, unfortunately. Now, what I did is I actually tested the the uh, white channel on both ballasts, and it worked fine. Checked the blue checked the blue channel on both ballasts, and of course, it was not working. I even went so far to um, rip off and break off the burnt out diodes. There was three or four of them, something like that, and then try to jump the circuit with a wire soldering to get it to work. Still didn't. So I went ahead and ordered a new PCB board. It should be here within the next few days, and then I'll just go ahead and have the three SB reflights over the right section. And then I went ahead and um, ordered uh, Blue Plus and actinic bulbs for the left side. So right now I have 
I just put them on there today. I have uh, four blue plus bulbs and two actinics over the uh, left frag tank. And uh, that's the ATO going off right now. Oh, do you guys remember that from the old 125? Every time I made a damn video, the ATO went off. Damn, I'm so sick of that thing. I still have that ATO too. I'll probably never use it again. But uh, so yeah, enough of that. Yeah, so that's the lighting situation over the frag tank. I will I will be doing this once we're done with the 300. I will be adding um, XR15s with T5s on each frag tank. So I will be replacing all the lighting down the road. But again, that's a good chunk of money uh, when we're still building the uh, 300. So it's not going to happen right now. Uh, let's go and move down and see what other questions. Uh, how about reef safe triggers? Now I'm not interested in triggers. I don't really like the way they swim. I do have that cool little back fin. Not a fan of it, guys. Um, if you know me, I really love tangs. It's just kind of my thing. Um, so I'll probably just stick to tangs, have the snowflake eel, probably add a couple of clownfish since I moved these guys into the 30-gallon, uh, some anthias, some uh, chromis, stuff like that. But uh, majority of it will be tangs. Uh, let's see. Scroll down, and then we're going to be cutting it short, do some last uh, questions and kind of cut it short. Uh, I do have a couple emails here and they are about coral. They're not about this. So we'll do that afterward. Um, what about bio pellets? Chuck, did you ask a question previously? Cause that's all I have there. Uh, quickly bio pellets. I don't use them anymore. I know I mentioned earlier why I don't use the bio pellets. Uh, basically uh, when I added that Niles quantum 300 protein skimmer to the 200 gallon frag system, it skimmed so well that the bio pellets in the skimmer together cause issues of macropores. I took the bio pellets offline and I uh, never put them back on. Now I did run bio pellets on that 125 pretty much the entire time um, that uh, that it was up, and I was very successful with it. But the only issue was um, the corals grew very well. I mean, I had really high par, like six, seven hundred par. Uh, it grew very well. The corals did, but they were really light in color, and I had to contribute that to the bio pellets, uh, and of course, probably the probably the high lighting, but. Um, I got a lot of growth, but the coloration wasn't very good in the 125. I know it was kind of hard to tell in the videos, but compared to what I have now for growth and coloration on lower lit tanks with no bio pellets, there's no comparison. So that's kind of how it is right now regarding the bio pellets. All right, guys, uh, we are just about done. Um, yeah. If anybody has any questions, I'll give you about 30 seconds to put them in. Um, let's see here. I'm getting my phone blew up, blew up too. Shout out to Marsha, 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 Marsha. Are you on the live stream? I don't know. Just rebooted my phone. Okay. Um, yeah, guys. Well, that's about it for this stream. I will be back next week. Um, if you guys have any questions for the live stream, just send me an email. It says live stream Q and A and ask your question. I'll answer it on next week's. If you want to get into the hangout, go ahead and um, check out the Patreon page. The link is in the description below. Uh, we're also doing a raffle on there. Um, and uh, yeah, good to go. Anyways, guys, I will. Uh, I'll see you guys next week then. Hey, Trevor, hit me up. See when we can uh, do the uh, probe thing. Sure, man. We'll do. Thanks, man.